tuning in. The service is just about to start, and I am so glad that you're not going to miss this one. Each and every month, we have a prophetic word, and the prophetic word for this month is redemptive power. Be blessed as you join the worship. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord, that is your name. Oh, 
Stronger than the strongest, the beginning and the end. I will go on, Joe. Hey, what you're doing amazes me. You amaze me, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for coming down, and laying down your life for us, Jesus. Oh, thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Because of you, I'm no more a slave. I'm no more a slave because of you. Thank you, Jesus. Because of you, we are no more slaves. No more slaves to fear. No more slaves to sin. Thank you, Jesus. to me you are Your 
I want you just to take some few seconds and lift up your voice and start to magnify the name of the Lord for his grace upon your life, for keeping you, for shielding you, for providing for your needs, for guiding around you, for making his will to be done in your lives. Why don't you just go ahead and thank God for the things that he did yesterday, but also the things he's doing right now. Even though you cannot see it, but you know that God is walking behind the curtains. Just go ahead and be thanking God for the things you don't think is possible. That God is going to make it to work for you. At the end of the day, that you will glorify the name of the Lord. Because our God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do. Thank you for doing it the way you do it. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. I want you to please stretch your hands towards these children here. They have come before the Lord. Let us pray that the God's anointing and power will rest immersely upon them. That in this season they will show forth the glory and the wisdom of God. That everywhere they go, the mark of God will be upon them. Lord, we cover them in the blood of Jesus. All the children here and the ones that are also online. Father Lord, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over them in their going out and in their coming in. Amen. Father, we pray that you will use them for your glory. Father, don't let this ones be ordinary. Let them be extraordinary. Amen. Let them be supernatural children. Yes, Fulfilling your mission and your mandate. Amen. We bless your name, our deliverer. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you believe in your prayer, can you put those hands together for Jesus? God bless you children as you go to the children's ministry. Let us take the electronic announcement. God bless you as you sit down. Welcome. Please pay attention to the following information. And God bless you as you listen and participate to them. The church has two services lined up each and every Sunday. The first service starts from 10 a.m. to 11.30. The second service starts from 12 noon to 1.30. You're welcome to join us with your family and friends. Counseling with Pastor Chris Areme takes place each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. Please register with the church secretary, Sister Deborah Arunu, in advance. Bible study. Grow in the word with our Bible classes every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. There is also the possibility to join us online. The link will be posted on all our social media platforms. Women's Prayer Meeting. Women's Prayer Meeting holds every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. For more information, Contact the woman's leader. The Youth of UCC. The Youth of UCC meets every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and every second Friday of the month from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every youth is free to join and invite their friends too. Moving on to the prayer intercessors. The prayer intercessors meet every second and third Saturday of the month. Question and answering. There is the opportunity for personal interactions as we tackle problematic issues and provide biblical answers in our Q&A sessions. This takes place every last Sunday of the month. Don't miss out. Night video takes place every last Friday of the month from 11 p.m. to the next morning. And Testimony Sunday takes place every third Sunday of the month. And lastly, the venue for all our church activities is the church auditorium. Please visit our website at www.bocc-stuttgart.de We wish you a fruitful week and stay blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Let's open our Bible by the way of the book of John chapter 20 from verse 26 to 29. St. John chapter 20 from verse 26 to 29. Is there anyone joining us for the very first time today? If today is your very first time of being in BOCC, please can you stand up for recognition? Let us uh, welcome you, that sister over there. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us appreciate the sister at the back there. All right. All right. You are welcome. You are welcome to be in our midst this morning. God bless you richly. Um, John chapter 20 from verse 1. Um, from verse 26, sorry, <laughs> from verse 26 till um, 29. Let us stand up for the reading of the word of the Lord. It's right on your screen. In case you don't have your Bible with you, you have to rush out of the house this morning. We do understand these things, uh, but uh, thank God for the 
electronic means of the word of God. The word of the Lord reads this way. And after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thine hands, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28 and 29 says, And Thomas answered and said unto Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. I want you to read verse 29 with me. Everybody ready? Go. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Spirit of the living God, have your preeminence in this place. Give us word for the season. Help us to be able to see. Open our eyes, our mind of understanding. Flood us with your wisdom. Make in us the ability to be able to see from your perceptive and dwell in your presence always thank you for the revelation of your word this morning we honor your name our lord and our king in jesus mighty name we pray somebody shout hallelujah please let's sit down in the presence of the lord god bless you richly i'm bringing you the word of the lord this morning with a subject i'm calling seeing is believing or believing is seeing depending on how you want to look at it but my subject for real is singing is believing I don't know if you've ever heard that term before where people say singing is believing that means if you cannot see it you cannot believe it that means everything that you see you believe I wonder if everything that we do see each and every day are everything we believe there are some things you do, you do see them and yet you don't believe in them. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, agnostic or a believer. Not everything you see, you believe in. And not everything that you can see is existing. Around us, there are many things that we could not see, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that is a world on itself greater than our physical world which we cannot see. If we are talking about rocket science and uh, microphysics, there are many things around us, huge, mightier in numbers and in quality than the things we can see in our physical world. There is a lot of things like Wi-Fi is right here where we are, but can you see it? Talk back to me, brothers and sisters in the Lord. You cannot see it. What about radio frequencies? Can you see them? No, you can't. There are long waves, there are short waves, there are middle waves. Question is, can you see them? There are ultraviolets moving in the air which you cannot see. There are gammas in the air which you cannot see. Some of you are thinking, what is he talking about in case you don't go that far into this physics? goes like, is he speaking in tongues? No, they are, it's, these are reality. Let me break it down to the level of our understanding. Uh, what about uh, bacteria? But you cannot see them. What about viruses? We cannot see them. Some of you are looking funny right now if you put a mirror in your face. Why? because we are fighting an unseen enemy they are do exist but we still cannot see them if i'm able to open your eyes to the world of electronics there are rays in the air which are very thick and very colorful if you are able to see them or i put the glass on your eyes for you to be able to see what is there you will not be able to move from where you are and make another step why there are so many and disturbing 
that you cannot even see the next step in front of you probably the reason why we are not seeing them is so that we can progress because if you see everything that is existing you will not do the things that are existing i'm going to back up a little bit there are many things around us which we cannot see but brothers and sisters in the lord it doesn't mean that they are not there they just mean you need to look with another perception the word of the lord says in the book of psalm 19 in verse 1 it says the heavens proclaim the glory of god and the sky describe or display is craftsmanship that means there are things above you that you cannot see they are there but you still can't see the word of the Lord says in the book of Romans chapter 120, he says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God has made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Did you hear what I just said? The Bible says since the creation, God has given us things that can be clearly seen so that we can understand the things that are not seen. So that at the end of the day, none of us, you and I, people watching from, on, from uh, 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 this uh, wave online right now, they do not have excuse of not knowing God. So if you don't know God, you have no excuse. Everything you can see is making you to see the things you cannot see and its existence in the book of second uh, book of second corinthians sorry second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 it says so we don't look at the things that we do see rather we gaze on those things that we cannot see <laughs> i don't know if you know that is in your bible the Bible says we are not looking at the things we see but we are seeing the things which we cannot see. For the things that we see are temporal and the things we cannot see are eternal. So that means the things that we cannot see, the Bible is saying let us look into them even though you cannot see them so that you can see the things that you are neglecting not able to see and uh, i'll give you one more scripture i'm not going to bore you this morning uh in the book of hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 i know we have bible scholars in the house today and everybody can quote that verse for me offhand hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 it says faith is now the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things that you cannot see so you have faith in things that you cannot see you believe more on the things you cannot see it doesn't matter if you believe God agnostic or you are atheist you believe only mainly the things you cannot see <laughs> and what are those things you believe that tomorrow is coming can you see tomorrow everybody believes it and do you know the craziest part? Everyone that is walking, they are so crazy. Because they are working in a particular institution, in a government establishment, they are working with a boss that they are not even sure if he's going to pay them salary. But because of a funny contract letter they signed, they believe that at the end of the month, they are going to collect a salary. Now, that is a huge faith. In an ordinary man that doesn't even believe in himself <laughs> do you know your company at times don't even they are not even sure if they can pay your salary you don't know that do you well if you start to work on another level you will figure out that the money that they are even giving to you they don't even have it but they have faith and you're sitting down in this place today and you're thinking in your mind i have to see it before i believe it let me introduce you to my dear friend this morning which we have just read their story in the bible the bible says after jesus christ has resurrected we celebrated resurrection which we call easter sunday last sunday 
the Bible says today which is eight days afterwards uh, something happened what happened Jesus has uh, entered in through a closed door the things that they could see and reveal himself out of absolutely nothing appeared in their midst and said to them peace be unto you so they will not be scared of the things that they cannot see Jesus made them to understand that even though you cannot see it doesn't mean I'm not in it even though you cannot feel it doesn't mean I'm not there brothers and sisters in the Lord there are times in our life we pray we seek God's face and because we don't see it we feel that God is not answering who knows what I'm talking about because you are not having a solution to your trouble it seems as if God didn't hear your prayers who has ever felt like that but God says even though the answer is not there even though the, the, uh, the prayer is not answered according to your own perceptives does not mean that God is not in the midst of it. Can I just go ahead and, and prophesy to you? Even though you cannot see the move of God, God is moving the thing. He's still there. The Bible says the children, uh, the disciples were on the boat one day. It was dark and the wind was boisterous. Water was falling into the boat. They were about to sink. A ghost was moving towards them. The Bible says that they don't know what it is. And Jesus in the midst of that storm. And they did not know that he was there. He says, peace be unto you. There are storms that happen in our life. But we do not know that there is a Lord of the storm. He needs the storm to move to your situation. If he doesn't come in a storm, you will miss him. So once in a while, when we ask God to reveal himself, he might be coming with storm. Oh, some of you are not ready to receive my word today. And because he's coming with the storm, we think it is a different identity. And we give it devil. <laughs> but God says, I'm the Lord of the storm. Is there anything too hard for me? I don't know if you have ever read about it. The Bible says when he came upon Mount Horeb in the book of Exodus chapter 19, he came with a storm. Is that not true? The Bible says when he revealed himself to Elijah, after he ran for 40 days and 40 nights, he fought, fought, the first thing that moved was earthquake and wind and tornado. But God was not there. But this are his entourage. Whatever is going on in your life right now, they are the entourage of God that are proclaiming holy. Holy is the Lord God of the storm. Believing is seeing. And uh, while Thomas was there, and uh, uh, Thomas wasn't there, brothers and sisters in the Lord, so don't let me confuse you. While Jesus was in the midst of the disciple, the Bible says Thomas was not around. Thomas uh, maybe has gone shopping. Maybe Thomas was cooking. Maybe Thomas was sleeping. Maybe Thomas was uh, taking care of his activities. I want to show us five things that we are going to learn from the story of Thomas. The Bible makes it clear, number one, that Thomas in his big mouth is a strong person i know most of us we have labeled thomas a doubting disciple who has ever heard that before doubting thomas thank you we think the, the name thomas actually even means doubting <laughs> well it's not true the bible calls him thomas the didamos didamos means twin some of us that are coming from African background, we know that twin has a, they do have particular names at times coming from the place where I came from. You can recognize somebody is a twin by their name. Who knows what I'm talking about? Thank you. In Hebrew, it's also the same. You can notice that this person is a twin by their name. His name is Didymus. 
which means a twin some of us you just mentioned the twin name in your country language let me hear it aka taya sa hey, hey whoa there are some i cannot even pronounce them praise the lord you see all those names you already we have kenya there we have taiwo we have you know asan odion aheri mind that girl she won she won is loan she calling herself too praise the lord so so demons means twin it means uh, uh <coughs> forgive me but i have two parts of me and some of you you have two parts of you is that not true oh you don't just want to admit it but you know the part that comes to church is not the one that is at home Come on, talk back to me now. The part that came to church is not the one that go to your working place. Uh, some of you, if I either if I ask your co-worker how you are, I will be stunned at the Christophaniac ability of what you can do. That means you can disguise yourself to be all this I can see, and I've known you for 10 years. And I will see another person who has never been to church before. Who has known you in your working place for the past 15 years. And know you completely different. Let's learn from Thomas. Thomas says one day, he says, let's go. The number one thing that Thomas did is to teach us how to let go. Uh, Thomas uh, first disciple spoke in the in the book of John chapter 11 verse 16 when Lazarus was uh, recently died and the apostles were sealed in and Jesus was away Jesus was not where thought what was not where Lazarus died and uh, all the disciples of Jesus told Jesus uh, please know that they want to kill you you cannot go there and uh, Thomas was the only one that was bold when Jesus says let us go Thomas was the only one that answered and said let's go even Jesus Christ was saying you know Thomas was even so ready he says let us go and die together is that what he said <laughs> Thomas was so bold he was like let's go and die the boldness of Thomas we saw him in the let go. We saw him uh, putting everything down, laying it at the altar. Uh, selfless Thomas. He doesn't think about himself at all. He was ready to go all the way with God. There are times in our life we sell ourselves so much in our dreams and visions. We believe in what we think we know. We believe in what we hope should work and we go all the way for it is called a let's go stage the second stage i'm going to find uh, i'm going to bring thomas into us is the second stage of we are where are you going stage number two where are you going uh, 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 jesus spoke in the book of john chapter 14 in verse 5 he explained that he's going away to prepare in heavenly places a home for everyone that follows him. And uh, one day they will join him there. Naturally, the disciples don't necessarily understand what he's talking about. That he's going and preparing a, a place for them. And where he is, they will come also. See what Thomas says. He says, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. So, so how can we know the way? How are you trying to tell us uh, you are going somewhere? We don't even know where you are going. All the disciples were silent. They were saying amen behind their mask like this Sunday morning. As if they understood what pastor was saying. Something I have notified uh, 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 in my own life is the fact that because of the fact that people are sitting down in the church saying amen, nodding their heads, doesn't mean they understood nothing. At times they understood Jack. 
they are just trying to do it so that whoever we speak in can feel comfortable or so that whoever is speaking can continue to be riding on thank you Otnella. you've heard people say in the house of the law preach pastor yes amen right on man of god you ask them after the end of the service what did they preach nothing have absolutely not just moved in the excitement of the flow but have no idea what is being said which bible verse did we use if I ask right now, if I can make a test where, uh, to ask everybody that was here last Sunday, what was the Bible reading we read last Sunday? You see, everybody's trying to figure it out. Habakkuk? Huh? Hosea? John chapter 15? Huh? Uh-huh. Which verse? Oh. The, the media has uh, helped you out, right? Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Who has read the Bible since last Sunday? Who is lying from the one that raised up their hand? Keep your hand up. If you lie, just keep it up. Just keep it up so I can see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> praise the Lord. So, not everyone that is speaking understands what is being said. Not everyone that is saying amen understood what they said amen to. But Thomas, my God, was able to confront the Lord and says, Where on earth are you going, my friend? We knew about Lazarus. We said, let's go. We got there. But this one, where is the way to that place where you are building? What are you even building? Who is even coming there? Thomas was ready to understand the journey of life. As you are going through life, there has to be a time in your life where you ask questions. If you are not asking questions, you are not participating in the journey. Did you hear what I just said? If you are not asking questions in your marriage, you are not participating. My dear, where are you going? What is the dream? What is the vision? What is the plan for our children? What is the plan for me? What is the plan for our, you know, let's know where we are going. If you don't ask questions. Son, when are you going to finish? Daughter, when are you going to start making money? Huh? When are you going to be saved for real? When will you give your life fully to Christ? When will we find a satisfaction in our belief system? When are we going to make reality out of all this? When are we going to bring people to the knowledge of Christ? Ask questions. And even if you ask God question, he is not going to be nervous. Someone told me one time, don't ask God questions. I'm like, are you a fool? That is a religious statement. The Bible is full of people asking God stupid questions. And God never killed anyone. Where were you when all this problem was? Where were you when Lazarus died? Did God kill them? In the matter of fact, he demonstrated his power after they asked the question. There is nothing wrong. That stage in your life, there is a stage whereby you are going. There is a stage where you are going to ask questions. Give me my, my next flip, please. I need to hurry. I need to hurry. Hallelujah. The next thing that we see um, um, uh, this great guy did. My Lord. Is... Uh, Let's grow together. Don't go without me. If you are not, if I'm going to go, God, I don't want to go alone. I, 
uh, I took a, a picture of my arches on my window and I use it as one of my picture in this particular slide that is if uh, the media are going to find it out uh, and in this particular slide I put in um, uh, I, 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 I am not ready to go if God is not going that portion of the Bible is found in the book of Exodus chapter 33 in um, I'm not there yet you left my slide please thank you um, Exodus 33 from verse 15 to 16 it says something quite interesting I, I took this uh, picture I, it looks beautiful here more than it is in my house my lord can you imagine that one is actually in my window and I gather arches I love arches because they are very simple to take care of I know some of you are thinking huh they are <laughs> they are arches are the most easy flowers to deal with people call them they're they are very uh, sensitive and they you at times they just die off I don't know maybe you have green fingers I love plants arches grow in my house like crazy like wild at times they are bigger than my palm they grow to the extent that I have to pick them out from the soil and replant them again because they are growing and spreading their roots that is a miraculous action that God gives to me. I don't know. But one thing I found out there was that there was a time I, have, I had a lot of them. I had a lot of arches. Every window in each and every room had arches. And they are so packed. At times I have on one window seven, eight, ten flower pots. White, red, pink arches. And all of them were coming from almost the same place. I'm going somewhere. One day, I, I followed a friend and I went to, uh, we went to a particular store. And there in that store, again, I saw arches. And that arches was so beautiful. Mind you, all the arches I had in my house, I never paid a penny. I never paid a penny for all, any of them. How, how I got them? I got them because whenever they are dried and they were about to die, they give it out. So I will pick them and bring them to my house, replant them, and they grow like wildfire. So I never paid for anyone, not even a cent. I went to the shop one day and I saw this orchid, but this one, it has white and has a, a kind of pinky uh, frame around the flower. I loved it. So I said to my friend, can I pick this orchid? He says, yeah, yeah, you do whatever you want to do. So I went to the, to the cashier. I paid, I only paid $19.90 for this orchid. Mind you, that's the only orchid I paid money for. So I brought it home with the satisfaction that all these orchids in my house, at least I can claim them since I bought one. But the greatest mistake I made was to put this orch, orchi, uh, orchas, uh, in, the, in the midst of the other ones. Months pass by and this particular Hoshidin was having lies. Was having white lies everywhere. They were, they were flying. And before I could know it, infected the next one. And the next one. And the next one. So I was trying to go like, okay, what happened? So I took them out. I, you know, I love plants. I don't, I don't like so much of animals. I know you are looking at me so strange. I, I love plants. So I decided to take them to the balcony. I washed them, took them to the backyard, you know, try to replant, put it back again, clean it up, put it back into the sitting room where they used to be. To my amazement, two months later, not the only one in the sitting room was infected. The virus went to the one in my living room the children's room, the kitchen, and the bedroom, sorry. At the end of the day, I have to pack all the arches and throw them away. Just because of one that infected the whole of them. Who is that one thing that is affecting, destroying your life? Don't bring them in into the spoil. 
don't bring them into the store leave them outside there most of the time we even pay for the destruction that is coming to us I'm going somewhere I'm talking about Thomas Didymus uh, uh, at times we need to bring someone that has a, a positive influence in our life to infect our life because it's too dull Didymus was able to know that person is Jesus walked with him talked with him so that brought me to the next level where uh, uh, Tom, uh, Thomas the Didymus explained something to us which I would love you to get and that is the more you look the less you see the more you look for the meaning of life the less you see around you and miss the small things which will become the only good thing you will remember later in life don't look for more look at the small moments try to be happy with the small things in your life and deep conversation and good friends and also good community acknowledging small things in life is a big deal and is a healthy perspective understand community Thomas was not around when Jesus came Jesus came to express to the whole group that he has risen to, to strengthen their motivation and their faith to go on I'm already in the next sleep. Thank you. Uh, uh, they, to strengthen their motivation to go on. But Thomas was not there. Have, where are they those days in our life when we should be in situation but we are not there? There are places you need to be but you are not there. Because, because of the fact that you are frustrated or disappointed by somebody. And where you know you must be, you are not because of uh, external issues my prayer for everyone that is in here and online is where you need to be may you always be there may you not be absent in the place where it is necessary for this next level of elevation in your life ah! what will have happened if Saul the king was not present and the back maybe will never be loved been spoken to us to what his destiny is all about on the day of the inauguration of David to be the next king do you know what he wasn't there but it was not purposefully he was driven away whoever has driven you away from where you need to be in this season in your life God will surprise them I say God will surprise them. I say God will surprise them. Wherever you need to be, my prayer is that you will be there. Place are necessary for our next elevation. Place and time needs to clap their hands together for the next progression. Place and time. Thomas was not there. You see, it's very important for us to congregate the way we do congregate. I understand the fact that there is all these challenges and this and that, but I've heard many people said many times that, oh, well, it doesn't really necessary for me to be in church or me to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, I bet to differ. I bet to differ. You know why? Because no one tree makes a forest. There are things you will never be able to do single-handedly believe me it doesn't matter how powerful you are we need one another even though we might frustrate one another at times and all those things are needed that's the reason why God puts you in a family he did not give back to you and throw you on a tree so so God is not stupid by making there to be a mother and a father even though you don't like them they are necessary for your life Am I speaking? That's why God placed you in a church like this. Bring different kind of people, different heads, different background, different faces, different attitude, different character. Have you ever seen the brothers and sisters in the Lord and all their characters? My Lord. 
I don't know about you. There are some people in this church when I see them, I go, do we go to the same church? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just speaking out to your mind. I know you are not ready to tell them. But let me tell them for you. That you ask, your, that you ask yourself, do you go to the church I go to? Is Pastor Chris your pastor? I am so ashamed. And they are needed so you can discover yourself the reason why they still maintain their character is because you haven't changed yours if you cannot say amen just say oh me it isn't jesus intention that we follow him in isolation from one another it's incredibly important for us to be connected to you and uh, regularly gather with other Christians. I don't, I don't want to go too much in details. There are scriptures that says it is necessary. It says it is beautiful when people gather together. It says it's like an oil that flows from the head of Aaron to his beard and to his garments. It is beautiful when saints gather. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 22, it says God uh, lives in the praises of his people, not on individual. So if you think I will just stay home and serve my God and watch online, oh, it, there is an advantage to it to a particular level. But if that be your normal life for everyone that is watching us online, this is a call to come home. Don't be like Thomas Didemus. That when Jesus came, they were Thomas was online. Not on ground. So after the online media people, we have the media people right here. You are seeing what they are projecting, but you don't see them. And have you wondered? Seeing is believing. Not everything you see is everything that it is. So the media cut off every, the most thing that you are not seeing, which is only there in the on ground. Do you know the service still goes beyond what you see? The people on ground say amen. You you that you are there, you are saying, huh? I thought I see the beginning to the end. You didn't you didn't see the beginning. They started in the middle. And they ended in the middle. Is that not so? Is the service not started before they start recording? Uh -huh. And after they finish, is it not still on? Thomas was not around. Two things Thomas did not have because he did not congregate with the disciples. The Bible says he did not have the breathing of the Lord. The Bible makes it very clear that after Jesus has said them, he said, peace unto you, and Jesus breathed upon them. Did you read that one in your Bible? Was Thomas around? No, he did not receive that breathing. The same breathing that God the Father breathed upon the sand and called it Adam and became a living soul. That breath, Didamus missed it. May you not miss the breath of God. Can I go a little bit deeper? I go deeper and then I will leave you in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> the next thing we want to see what happen is uh, I'm not going. Uh, Thomas was skeptical at the first time when he heard that Jesus Christ has already arrived and appearing to the disciples and Thomas said unto them until I put my hand in the wound and my fingers in his hands I will not believe except I see it. I will, I'm, I'm not going the direction you guys are going. Uh uh. Yeah. Don't come and fool me. I've come to church too long. I've seen all the politics. Don't come and fool me. I understand your pain. I understand your struggle. Listen, I am an advocate for Didymus Thomas. But I also want us to learn from what he missed. And and Jesus Christ still came for him. The long suffering of Jesus himself. A week later, he came and answered the question of Thomas. 
for anyone that is in here you have a question in your heart the son of god is bringing an answer for you between now and the next eight eight days you will see the revelation of the word of god concerning that issue that is troubling your mind if that is you let me hear a better amen i believe god will never leave you wondering if he's wondering you is because he's a wonder if God is making you to wonder over that situation, it's because the answer for that situation is wonder. That's why he kept you there still wondering. Because if he reveals you, it to you immediately, you will not cherish the value of it. So he makes you to wonder a while. Be patient. Be patient in your work with God. I said be patient in your work with God. 25 years Abraham walked with God. He wasn't hearing God every day. Did you think he, did you think he heard God every day? Uh, read in your Bible how many times did God spoke to him in 25 years. Three, four, five. Okay. And at times we are sitting down here if you have not heard God 10 times in one week. You want to commit suicide. Oh, it's good. It's good to expect that. It's good. But I'm just trying to tell you, still go deeper with him. He's taking you on a journey. The last thing I want us to see before I bring a closure to this, as we are seeing and believing, is, uh, is uh, the lesson that we learned. The lesson we learned is like... Uh, uh, by the time Jesus Christ came for him, Jesus uh, did not uh, uh, scold Thomas. Did you see it? He didn't scold Thomas. All he did, he was like, reach out your hands and put it right here into my side and believe. Since that is the level you want to flow with, let us go from there. Yeah, put your hands here. See what you are looking for. Trust your hands in my side and believe for yourself. And then he exclamated and says, my Lord, my God. It's the first person from all the disciples that ever called him God. You see, revelation will make you to see a level of God which you might never have seen before. Revelation, powerful, makes you to see God in the area where you have never seen before. And see what Jesus Christ said to Thomas. He says, blessed are you. Is that what he said? No, he didn't say that. Let's see what he said. He says, because you have seen me Huh? you have believed okay because your seeing has activated your belief and Jesus Christ now said to everybody sitting down here and everyone online blessed are you because you didn't see and yet believed you are on the blessed journey of life because of the fact that there are some things going on right now that you do not see but you believe them. You never saw Jesus Christ walk this road. You never saw him crucified. You never saw him buried. You never saw him resurrected. You never saw any of this thing and yet you come to church on this Sunday believing that God exists. God says, blessed are you. Because all your life you'll be walking on the platform of the things that are unbelievable. Oh, every day of your life will be a wonder for your enemies because the things which they thought it is impossible you will be making it possible why? because you believe in God even though you didn't see it I pray for every prayer you have made in the corner of your room in the silence of your moments in the weeping of your eyes in the dark of your days that all those prayers will come to manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you believed 
and yet not sin. I want everyone to stand on their feet. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. I have come as an advocate of uh, Thomas the Didymus to tell you that there's nothing wrong with Thomas. He only has double nationality. He's an African and a German. He has two faces. He feels weak at times, but there are days where he's very strong. Have you ever seen strong people before? Have you ever seen people that are always peaceful before? Have you ever seen people that always laugh? Believe me, there are days they are very sad. But you don't, you will never know. I have learned from my life experience that people that are always smiling are one of the saddest people on earth. I have learned it. They are able to keep it and not to show it to the public. Have you ever seen people that tell jokes? They are always comedy in their mouth. Oh, those people are going through horror. <laughs> horror. I told Pastor Zeno, I said, you are a sad man. He said, Pastor, how could you so that? I said, you tell a lot of jokes. There are some things you can know by the experience of life. I, I easily make people joke too, so maybe there are some things I'm not telling you. You know your pastor is, uh, is very real. I want, I want us to pray today. I want us to pray. If there is anyone in here today and, and you feel that you are the end of your road, you don't know what to do. Thomas is a good example. He came to the end of his road. He doesn't know what to do. All he was asking for now is that, no, no, don't fake me with all that belief, faith, and whatever. I want to see it first. Show it to me. Uh, I saw him being crucified. Are you kidding me? They nailed him, the two hands and his foot. They sliced his side. They put a, 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 a tiny crown on his head. I saw him die. And you told me, you're telling me he's resurrected? I, are you taking me for a fool? Thomas was real. I love real people. I'm very afraid of people that just go with the wind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, oh, 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 oh. It's good. Listen, it's good. But at the end of the day, after the ha 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 is over, what is remaining? Can you show me what is remaining? And if you cannot show me anything, ah, my friend, please go and look for something. Because there are times in our life when there is no ha 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 anymore, whatever is remaining is what holds you going. That's why at times uh, I prefer to teach in my preaching rather than preaching in my teaching because I want you to get the essence of it I want your brain to turn on I want you to criticize everything being said and I want you to go home with questions answers or angry one of the two or the three so you start checking on yourself what do I need to put back in order here not to make you to feel okay, to feel fine, and you're coming back for the next miracle the next day. Uh-uh. After the miracle is done, what is remaining? The children of Israel, they saw miracle, and at the, at, at the end of the day, they still die. Because there was no particles remaining. All the miracle was forgotten in Egypt. What happened? No one put it into their spirit what to believe in when there is nothing there to see if you cannot see it do you still believe God I want us to pray today for everyone that is going through 
the end of road journey. If you are that person, you are, you are tired, you are weary, you are, you are giving up, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, just show me with your hands and it's okay. I just want to know that I'm not praying by myself alone. Just show me and say, Pastor, can you please pray for me? I see that hand up there. Thank you, that hand. Put it down. I thank you, my brother. Yes, I see that hand. You can put it down. I'm tired. I just need to see something now. I've been hoping, I've been praying, I've been believing God. But I just need something. Is there anyone in here and, and you, you are not at the end of the road. You are, you are not like Thomas. But you are like the other disciples that saw everything and Jesus came. And, and you are not doubting him. But right now, right now in your life, you don't even know what to believe in. You don't even know what is what. Let me see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. You don't even know what to believe. Now, you have been there. You've seen everything. You've seen the miracle signs and wonders. Put down those hands. Thank you. And, and you are confused. You are between this and that. You, between that and this. We, we, where am I in my journey? Am I, am I at the beginning or am I at the end? Am I in the middle? How far do I need to go? What do I still need to do? You are, you are kind of confused with your joy and your happiness. I want to pray together with you. I want you to pray with me. Spirit of the living God. I pray for everyone. Right here on ground and over the airwaves. Having this doubt in their mind. or Those ones that have reached the end of the road. Those ones that are giving up. Those ones that are uh, they want to believe but they need to see Lord if you came for Didymus you can come for them today Lord give them something to keep them moving show them signs miracles and wonders let there be an activity that will happen between now and the next 24 hours for them to trust in God for their next 25 years you spoke to Abraham you did something in the life of Abraham that made his journey continuous. Even though there was no manifestation of Isaac. Lord, whatever you did for Abraham that made him continue to be following you, Lord, did you do for these people? In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, for everyone that is always there, they are always there, they are always there when Jesus was out, they are also there when Jesus was in, they saw the beginning and the end of Thomas, but right now, they want to go fishing. <laughs> they, they, they don't know. Am I at the beginning? Am I at the end? Am I to jump the river or I need to cross it? Lord, I pray your hand upon this ones too. Reveal to them the journey of purpose. Let their seeing become their believing. Let whatever they have believed in, but they could not see, be visible in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Jam those hands together for Jesus. Come on. For Jesus. That we cannot see, but yet believe. Come on. Wow, what an incredible service. Thank you so much for watching. If this has blessed you, then join our BOCC family. It's just one click away. Wherever you are, grab your family and let's make this an every week situation. And moreover, share this and bless someone around you. Feel free to visit our BOCC website and social media platforms. Thanks again and I wish you a beautiful week.